start? Okay. Hello, Ms. Raham. Nice to meet you today. I am the Dr. Saida Muhammad. I am the doctor in charge today. How can I help you? Okay, doctor. I have notized a better test in my mouth, uh, which is worse by waking, waking in the morning, and it's combined by burning sensation. Can you help me? I see. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, please, can you tell me what concerns you the most? Okay, uh, it's a better test in my mouth. Uh, it works on morning. It's combined by burning sensation in the back of throat. Mm -hmm. I also note it's worse during uh, morning, also after breakfast. Sometimes I had a bit of regurgitation of food. I smoked uh, five to 10 cigarettes per day. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. It must have stressful on you. Do you have a cough? Yes, doctor. I had a cough, slight cough when I speak. Okay. From what you told me, I, I strongly believe that you have something that called as a GERD. It is a gastroesophageal reflex disease. Have you ever heard about it? What, doctor? Do you mean reflex? I think it. Uh... Precancerous condition, it's lead to re, uh, lead to serious precancerous condition. Oh, now I see. I appreciate your concern. That is most concerning you. Now I want to and uh, I want to assure you that is not your case. Get assured, and we will discuss it in more detail. Uh, regarding the regarding the diagnosis, which is called it gastroesophageal reflux disease, I will go on to explain it to you in more detail. It is when the material from the stomach go back to your esophagus uh, that give you the problem which you, which you have, give you the burning sensation, the bitter sensation. But I want to assure you it is a very common condition and we can do a, a lot of treatment option to relieve it. By knocking at that door, okay, by knocking at that door, let us move and talk about the Management, how we can manage it. manage it. First of all, we have anti-acid tab. This is tab you can do it and relieve the metallic test. Number two, we have to modify in your lifestyle. I'm, I'm, I'm clear so far. I know it is difficult scene, but we will go in through it smoothly. First, you need to decrease your smoking and second, decrease the alcohol intake. And number third, we need to avoid meal before bedtime at least three hours. How does it sound to you? Okay, doctor, but I think my problem is more serious. Uh, can I see a specialist? Okay, I appreciate your concern. Uh, at this level, we don't need to see a specialist because we have a lot of uh, management plan. And we have a lot of management option. We can do it first, we can try it first. And if it doesn't work, probably we can then transfer or I can then refer it to, in, to see gastroenterologist. Are you okay with that? Doctor, but I think uh, C specialist is very important for me. I really appreciate your consent. Just very good question. Maybe seeing a specialist will be very good in later time, but first we will try this treatment option. And if it doesn't work, we will refer it to it. Are you okay with that? Okay, doctor. Okay. Uh, I want to re stress about the dietary and changing the lifestyle. As we said, we should, you avoid a meal before the bedtime of three hours. And I want you to slightly reduce your weight. How does it sound to you? Mm, I don't ac accept that, doctor. I don't think I can do that. Uh, I appreciate it, but uh, it will relieve your symptom very much if you can try it. Okay. Um, about the treatment, uh, we also need to elevate your head. Uh, 
put to pillow or something. Okay, so okay, thank you. Uh, just let me uh, write the last thing. Okay. Okay, thank you, Riham, for your help. Uh, Saeed, uh, <clears throat> uh, normally Aida. we are... Sorry? Okay. Aida. Aida. Saida, Saida. Saida, sorry, sorry. So I'm really okay. sorry. I thought it's Saida. Okay, Saida. So Saida, um, normally what we do here is to uh, to go over the uh, criteria, okay? So okay. whenever you have a card, try to cover the criteria. Because maybe you can you can't just finish the car the tasks in less than three minutes. Mm -hmm. So when we do the card, usually we put in mind that at least mm -hmm. we have greeting and introduction, and then when you say like, "How can I help you?" the patient will start talking, right? So you have to do, mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. Why you haven't done it in the performance? Now, when I am talking, you do the, uh, you are doing the listening sound. Try to do it as well in the performance. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, mm -hmm. I see. You haven't done any listening sounds in your performance, which is number two. Very important, the listening sounds is very important. You have done greeting and introduction, very good. Listening sounds, very weak. And then you have done the sympathy, good, but, we need number four, which is, what is number four, guys? Any idea? What, what is one number? One open question, one close question, summary. No. Second standing. No. Sign boasting. Sign boasting, yes. So a greeting introduction. Hello, my name is Dr. Said. I'm the doctor in charge. How can I help you? The patient will start talking about her problem. So mm -hmm, yes, okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, sympathy. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. But before we proceed, try to say, but before we proceed, this is sign boasting. So for the sign boasting, you have before and so, then after that. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can say firstly or first of all, uh, you can say finally. These uh, words will help you a lot to move from one task to the next one. Okay, so for example, you have explained something. How does that sound to you? Okay, doctor, I think I know it. Okay, so now let's talk about it. So yeah, now as well. Now. Do you think you can do that? Yes. After that, I would like to talk about. So you can use it to move from one task to another. So if you mm -hmm. are here, you can say now, I'd like to give you some advice. This, this is, how does that sound to you? Okay, good. Okay, finally, uh, I reassure, I'd like to reassure you so you can move with the, uh, with the uh, signposting. First of all, before we proceed, you can do the same. You need, you see? So this is the performance. This is the performance they are expecting to hear from you. Sign posting is very important. What comes in number five is open question. So you need to ask open question. You started with uh, eyes. You started with, with, what, with what we called eyes idea, concern, expectations. These yeah. are the last thing you can do. You can't start with eyes. It shows you that you are, uh, uh, you are just memorizing things, you know? Mm. So, so you, if you have a patient and she has a problem, okay? She has a headache. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. Uh, but before we proceed, can I ask you some questions? Yes, doctor, of course. Uh, how uh, can you tell me more about that? Okay, this one is very good. Open question. Can you tell me more about that? So at this point, the patient will ta start talk again, right? So you need to do listening sounds again. And then thank you for sharing this information with me. Uh, I just want to ask you one more question. Do you have any family history of migraine? Or uh, have you had any past medical history? Do you have any chronic illness in the past? So you may have something here you wanted to ask about. Or you can go with the eyes. What do you think the cause of this problem? Do you have any expectations of what we can do today? What is your most concern about? So these things 
comes the last in the uh, in the questions. You can't start with eyes. It's a bit like, uh, you know, when you start with the eyes, they will know that you are just memorizing things. It's not natural to, to start with the eyes with the doctor or with the patient uh, talk, okay? Okay. So in number five comes the information uh, gathering. What about number six? In number six usually goes with one of these things. So here number six goes with the uh, task number two, which is information giving. Let's go over your performance. You started with the eyes, which is not good to start. And then you asked her another question. Do you have a cough? Okay. Uh, thank you for sharing this information with me. Whenever the patient gives you something new, try to use thank you for sharing this information with me. Because this will raise the uh, score of uh, building a relationship with the patient. Uh, you have something. So this is your first mistake. Uh, uh, for what you tell me, so you have a problem with the grammars as well because you are mixing the past with the present. Uh, you have something called a uh, GERD. So this is uh, completely uh, judgmental. You cannot say you have. It's, mm -hmm. better, it's better to say uh, uh, according to the history and examination, for example, I believe this condition is called gastroesophageal reflux uh, disease. Have you ever heard about that? I think this condition, you cannot say, I think you have hypertension. I think you have diabetes. Uh, from the results, I think uh, you have uh, kidney cancer. Uh, the colonoscopy showed that you have colon cancer. You cannot say that. It's a bit judgmental. You know, but you can say, I think this condition, this situation, you, you go with this. The ultrasound showed that there is cancer. The histopathology revealed cancer colon. Okay. Whenever you give a bad, a bad news, you have to give a pause. You have to give the patient uh, time to absorb the shock. So if you are talking about something real serious, for example, cancer. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, when you are giving a bad news, try not to explain it straight away. The ultrasound showed that there is cancer, kidney cancer. And then you have to give a pause. Give the patient time to absorb the shock. Kidney cancer, what do you mean by that? No, I can't believe that, doctor. I really appreciate your concern. Must be frustrating for you. But let me explain more. And then you go with the explanation. Because if you give if you give the if you give the patient the explanation straight away, he will not listen to this. He he will just uh, spot the cancer and he will stop there. And you have to explain again. Okay? So here uh, you said you have something called, so this is judgmental. I appreciate your concern that you are concerned about. So this is a bit long. Why you are saying this one? I appreciate your concern is more than enough. Uh, your case, your stomach, your esophagus, judgmental and medical terms. You cannot, he, he doesn't know the esophagus. Okay. It's, it's a food vibe. You can't. Even the stomach, I don't know if it goes with the stomach as well, but your, the problem here with your, you cannot say your. It's better to talk in general about the problem. Uh, we can do a lot of treatment option. It's a bit uh, weird uh, statement as well. First of all, you said first of all, second, uh, secondly, and then you said number third. I don't know why you said number third, but uh, if it, it would be better if you said thirdly or uh, number three. Okay. Just want to put you on mute because uh, that is loud noise. Uh, you, need, uh, you need to stop your smoking. This is order. You cannot say that. Uh, and you need to decrease al alcohol intake as well. You cannot say that. We have to modify your lifestyle as well this is uh you cannot say that this is ordering you cannot say that it's better guys to talk with the um in general okay number one lifestyle modification number two stop smoking number three 
stop alcohol intake. That's it. Don't order. Don't, don't give order to the patient. Talk in general. Uh, what do you think? Uh, so you said this, what do you think more than once? It's a bit like repetition. As uh, the, at this level, we don't need to see a specialist. Here the patient asked for a specialist. Uh, if the patient asks any question, don't give him uh, yes or no. You have to go in between. So try to use your, uh, try to think about it. And you have to give her the diplomatic answer. Don't say no and don't say yes. But you have to go in between in the gray zone. I appreciate your worries. I believe we can start with the uh, this treatment. At some level, we may need to refer for endoscopy. Would that be okay with you? So you have to go in between. But don't say no at all. And don't say yes if it's no. Um, are you okay with that? You use it this one three times. I really appreciate your concern. We will try. So again, here you didn't answer her question properly. Are you okay with that? Again, repetition. I want to stress, that's a bit uh, um, indirect one. I want to you, I want you. So this is order. I want you to slightly decrease your weight. You cannot order this question. You don't know the problem with the patient. Maybe she has another circumstances that she enforced her for weight gain. Like she's maybe she's on steroids or she maybe is taking some medication that increasing her weight. Maybe she's stressed, so she eats a lot. So you cannot ask the one uh, someone. You cannot order someone to to, to uh, cut some weight. But what you, we can do here, I highly recommend weight control okay so weight control in general don't say you should decrease your weight because it's a bit order and you you don't want to go there uh will uh, release and she said no doctor i cannot do that so what you have said here you again you still uh, insisting on that you said uh, it will release your symptoms again your symptoms is judgmental uh, elevate your head again uh, problem with the your i think you have a problem with the your uh, but in general your english language is good but you need to go more with the criteria thank you saida for uh, the performance uh, okay back to the questions uh, i would like to you to do again i would like you guys don't go there talk in general without mentioning the patient ice ice is idea concern and expectations okay roba idea concern and expectations okay so reham you will be the doctor this time and nihal you will be the patient Okay, look. Uh, record this one. So your your mission in the card is not to explain the disease for the patient or to explain the pharmacokinetics of a drug or to convince him completely about something. Your mission is how you can uh, deliver this information in a very simple way, like using labels, or highlights, like make sure that he uh, understand you and give us the proper question uh, politely and explain in general, don't use medical terms. And again, make sure you, he understand you whenever he give, you give him information. Uh, even if the patient is not convinced, don't go there. Don't give false promise or fake uh, information or fake hope or uh, wrong information or don't agree on something. If they said do not do that and you said, yes, OK, I will do that uh, in, in order to uh, gain uh, the trust or to convince the patient. OK, so even if the patient did not uh, accept your answer, don't get frustrated. Your mission is to do the tasks along with the criteria. That's it. Sometimes you will have a reluctant patient. He will be reluctant all the way. So how you can do it? How will you do with that? Whenever you have a patient asking you the same question more than once, it means either you are giving him the wrong answer 
or you are using uh, too much information, you need to simplify it, or you are using too much information, you need to make it in a rows, like in labels or highlights, or you need to paraphrase it a little bit, or you can say, okay, this is a very good question. Let me explain it for you. But before that, I would like to talk and you take him to the next one. If you finish it, all these uh, possible causes, you go with number five. Oh, this is a very good question. Let me explain it for you. But before that, I'd like to talk about the treatment plan. Oh, this is important question. Uh, let me explain it for you. But before that, I would like to talk about uh, the treatment plan. You go with the next one, you know? So don't get frustration whenever the patient did not accept your answer. Unless, unless you gave him a lot wrong answer or you gave him a lot of information. If you simplified it and he uh, keeps asking the same question, you what you need to do is to move to the next one, okay? Uh, more explanation for this one. You can find more explanation for this point in the lecture archive in Discord. I think I mentioned this at some point, this one. If you go with this one, uh, 10th of November, 2021, uh, this picture, explains everything about the, your question. Okay, did you get it? Okay, yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, so back to you guys. Uh, what is the... Uh... I lost the card now. Okay, so uh, if you are ready, you can start now. Okay. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Dr. Riham. I am the treating doctor for today. How can I help you? Hello, doctor. Uh, I have noticed recently a bitter taste in my mouth. And yes. it is really concerning me. So I have come today to seek medical advice. Yes, uh, I think it's uh, very, uh, I really appreciate your concern. It could be very stressful for you, but uh, could you mind if I ask you, uh, could, you uh, could you mind if you explain to me more about your condition, about the condition? Yes, yes sure, doctor. Uh, really, I um, yeah, that is a better taste in my mouth. Uh, it's coming as a burning sensation in the back of my throat. And I have noticed this at worse during my walking at the morning after breakfast. Yes. Um, sometimes there is a better regurgitation of food as well. And I have come today yes. because I'm concerning about that. Okay, thank you for sharing this information with me. Um, according to history and examination, I think this condition is called gastroesophageal reflex disease. Have you ever heard about it? What doctor? Do you mean reflux? I have I, I have heard about it before and I think it is a serious and a precancerous condition. Is it right? Okay, let me explain to you. It is a reflex of food. It caused by alcohol, alcohol use, number one. Number two, being overweight. Uh, number three, smoking. Uh, number four, bad posture. Uh, do you follow me? Yes, doctor, I'm following you. And how can it be treated? Okay, this is a good question. But before we talk about management plan, we can talk about some dietary and lifestyle measures that can be very helpful in controlling it. Number one, weight management. Number two, there are some food to avoid. Meals will be little and often and not within three hours of bed. Uh, number three, which is very important, there are some lifestyle measures you can do. Uh, number four, smoking and alcohol. It's very helpful. Uh, number five, elevation of head bed. Number six, avoidance of exercise. Are you following me? 
Yes, doctor, I'm following you, but uh, I feel it is not it, it it is not going to work with me. I think, and I feel you are not taking ser me seriously, and I want to be seen by a specialist. If you don't mind. Yes, yes, I appreciate your worries, but I think refer for endoscopy is not warranted at this stage. It may be otherwise later it, uh, if there is a limited response to rantidine. Yeah, uh, I will uh, give you rantidine, which is H2 receptor. We it will be very helpful in your condition. Do you think you can do that? Doctor, I'll try to follow your advice, actually. I, I doesn't uh, see, it doesn't seem to work, but I'll try to do so. Okay, do you have any question? No, thanks. Okay, then we came to end of our appointment. Uh, this is my card, uh, my contact number. If you have any question, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nihal, thank you for your help. Riham, uh, first of all, my comment is that you are a bit uh, uh, in rush. I don't know why you are uh, a bit in rush. Your voice a bit uh, loud. So uh, here is another uh, a bit of advice. Okay, so uh, when you are doing the card, uh, your tone like this, okay? Sometimes you need to go up. Sometimes you need to go down. Sometimes you need to talk. Uh, uh, slowly. Sometimes you need to talk rapidly. But uh, what we have, what we had here, that you are doing the same all the time. This one uh, may decrease your uh, confidence, and it will affect your score. Uh, f when you are talking about something very important, you have to talk a bit slowly and deep. Uh, when you are talking about something, or for example, in the sympathy, if it is like bad news. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. If it is a good thing, oh, I'm happy to hear that. You see, uh, let me tell you that uh, the results showed that there is a uh, cancer. I'm really sorry to tell you that. So you need to go in between. You need to change your tone and the intonation as well. A greeting and introduction was good. Listening sounds was good. You have done something called self-correction. When you started the sentence and you change it in the middle, uh, like in the here in the sympathy, you have done it, as well as in the open question, you have done it two times. Uh, it's called self-correction. You go back to the record and you will understand it more. Uh, no, no sign boasting. You use it uh, okay about seven times. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, let me ask you. Okay, let me explain. Okay, this is a good question. Okay, do you understand? Do you have any question? Okay, are you following me? So try not to start with okay, because it sounds like uh, something sticks to your talk. Okay, thank you. Ah, uh, uh, according to the history and examination, you haven't mentioned any examination. So don't say it if you didn't ask to examine the patient. Have you heard about that? This one exploring patient's information. Good. Okay, let me explain again, okay? Uh, in the explanation, you started straight away with alcohol, number one, number two, being overweight, number three, bad posture. Uh, labeling and highlighting was done very good, but uh, the explanation wasn't uh, the one that we are expecting you to talk. So you need to explain what is... Uh, Gert. Okay, this is a good question again. Uh, you need to you need to talk more about the lifestyle modification. Uh, this is uh, categorization. Good labeling and highlighting again. Uh, but here we you didn't show uh, tell us is it good uh, smoking or alcohol or bad? Is it good uh, doing exercise or bad? Because you just mentioned it. Uh, are you following me? This one is check understanding. Good. Yes, 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 I appreciate. So this is a bit informal. Uh, but I think, so you are uh, putting your um, your idea on the patient. You need to explain, not to convince. Here, let me just... <clears throat> so, so uh, when you explain it this part, uh, 
uh, regarding the dietary and lifestyle measures that can help in controlling uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, number one, weight management. Number two, avoid heavy meals before uh, three hours uh, going to bed. Number three, which is very important, alcohol and uh, smoking and alcohol uh, cessation. And number four, which will be very helpful, elevating uh, head of the bed. And number five, uh, avoidance of exercise straight away after meal. Uh, do you think you can do that? Yes, doctor, I can do that, but I think it's not going to help me. I, my problem is a bit big. I think it's, it would be better if you just uh, if you refer me to a consultant. I really appreciate your concern. But let me just mention something else that may help in the treatment strategy, uh, something called ranitidine, uh, which is a, a medicine that <clears throat> can antagonize the uh, uh, acid in your tummy. After that, we can talk about uh, a referral to a specialist. How does that sound to you? Uh, doctor, I'm not a bit, I still concerned about my problem. Let me reassure you. So you can say, let me reassure you. Okay, at, at this point, a referral to endoscopy may be uh, not necessary, but after we finish with the treatment and a review will be done and we'll talk about there, uh, that after that. Would that be okay with you? This one would be a little bit more convincing to the uh, patient. Very good performance. Thank you, uh, Nihal. Uh, 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 Riham, thank you, Riham. Back to you, Nihal. Uh, you will be uh, the doctor. If you have any question, guys, before we move on. Okay, no question. Talking. Can you just explain more about the informality in the talking? Okay. Repeating yes, 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 or what exactly? Yeah, yes, okay. So uh, uh, let me uh, uh, draw this one. Okay. So this is the table, okay? And this is your patient, and this is... Uh, uh, this is you, the, the doctor, talking to the patient. Here, you have to uh, uh, mimic that you are uh, a doctor, okay? And the interlocutor is a patient. When you are talking here at this point, you need to be more uh, formal. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a bit informal way of talk. Even if you are saying, yeah. are you okay with that? Are you okay? Uh, do you understand? This is informal. You need to gain trust of the examiner uh, that you are a bit serious uh, in the talk and you are uh, a formal talk. Uh, you do the formal talk. Okay, okay, okay. It's not formal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not formal. Uh, so if you, the patient is talking, you can say yes. I see. I, uh, I, am, I am following you. Yes. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. If the patient asked you a question, don't answer him direct straight away. I really appreciate your question. I really appreciate your concern. Oh, this is a very important question. Let me explain it for you. Let me go over. Let's talk about. Let us discuss the management plan. Would that be okay with you? How does that sound to you? Are you following me? Don't say, are you following? Don't say, do you understand? Because these are informal way of question. So even if I want to say, uh, is this okay with you? It should be, would that be okay? Yeah, it, 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 is uh. this okay with you is good, but it's not the one that you need to do it in a real exam, you know? Uh -huh. Would that be okay is uh, more polite and more formal. Okay. okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorry? I'm going to say that 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 I'm going to say Again, good question. 
uh, she's asking that she needs to know how she can avoid mentioning your condition or the, the patient in general uh, and how she can manage it, okay? So this is uh, a hint. So you can just avoid being judgmental. Again, let's go to the table. So this is the table again. This is your patient and this is uh, the doctor is sitting here and the patient give you his problem. So this is uh, the patient problem, let's say like headache or cough or anything. And this, you, what you need to do first thing, you need to throw your questions. What question, W question, when can you tell me more about that? So you have now like four questions or three questions, whatever it is. What you have in the middle, after you asked him the questions and he gave you the answers, you have the diagnosis, right? Yes. Okay, so this is your limit. Don't go to the patient. You have to talk only about the diagnosis. Uh, okay. uh, let me give you an example. So this patient has a headache, okay? Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. Uh, but before we proceed, can you tell me more about that? Okay, so uh, yes, doctor, this starts about my story starts about two days ago. I went to the party and I had some cups of wine. We danced a lot. We ate a lot. And then I think I had it uh, like sharp pain for a while. Mm -hmm. And then it goes away. I thought it's just a headache. Mm -hmm. Then the next day I had this headache again. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. I thought it's just a hangover, you know, doctor, that, right? Okay, yes, doctor. Yeah, I know that. But uh, I just want to ask you one more question. Do you have any family history of such a condition in the past? Oh, yes, doctor. Thank you for reminding me with this. My mother has a migraine. Oh, thank you for sharing this information with me. Now, let me explain this for you. Okay, now you have a diagnosis, which is migraine. According to the history, I believe this condition, I believe this condition is called migraine. Don't say, I believe you have migraine. Mm -hmm. According to the history, according to the blood investigation, according to the ultrasound, according to the CT scan, I believe this condition, this condition in the middle, don't say, I believe you have cancer. I believe you have uh, diabetes mellitus. Because this is judgmental, purely judgmental. It's not his problem. It, 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 he didn't make it for himself. So why you are pushing the diagnosis to the patient? Talk about the diagnosis in explanation. Talk about the diagnosis in treatment plan, in investigation, in advice. Whatever you, you are telling, just talk about the diagnosis. Don't talk about the patient. Because mm -hmm. this one will make you more professional, it will make you more polite, will make you more respectful, it will help you giving more, uh, take, gaining more um, scores, it will help you gaining uh, patient respect and uh, building good relationship with the patient. Uh, imagine you are imagining yourself uh, in a clinic and you are talking to your doctor and she said, you have diabetes mellitus, you have hypertension or she is talking about hypertension. What do you feel? What would be uh, your feeling if she said you have uh, hypertension? It's not your problem, right? I didn't make it myself. So why you are telling me that I have this problem? Even if we say it in Arabic, it's wrong way to, to explain. It's wrong to say that the patient uh, expired, for example. It's uh, not a polite way to say uh, 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 cancer patient, because this is judgmental. Patient with cancer, <clears throat> patient with diabetes, patient with history of hypertension. You should go like this, okay? Okay, I understand in the this polite way, but I don't have a problem, I don't have a problem, I don't have a diagnosis, I don't have a problem, 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 الفحص بتاعه انه وضع عنده ديابيتس لكن هو شاكي يعني انا اقوم اقول له من الفحص كده يقوم يقول لي طيب الفحص انا ما هو اسف في الفحص داير فحص ثاني يعني انا قصدي انه انا كده مش يعني بكون بطريقه غير مغني على العيان انه مش مفروض انا ادي والحاجة انه دي حقتك تماما انه الحاجه حقتك مما لا يدعو مجالا للشك نو 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 يو كانت سي نو اتس رونج يو كانت تيل هيم يو هاف نو نو اوكي 
Uh, maybe uh, this is in, in our uh, thinking, but it's not the, the right way to explain. Whenever you are telling him, uh, I believe this condition is called, so it's for sure he will understand it. Uh, the ultrasound showed there is a kidney cancer. So we are talking about his ultrasound. So it, it's for him, right? Uh, I, 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 the, uh, the results of the histopathology showed the histopathology. So this, the, it means your. Uh, because oh. uh, you are here and we are uh, discussing uh, ultrasound for you. So this is your ultrasound. But I don't want to say it uh, in, a, in, a, in a rough way, rude way. Okay, so I just say uh, the ultrasound showed there is uh, cancer or there is tumor. So this ultrasound belongs to this man, but I don't want to say your ultrasound or you have cancer. You okay, need to, okay. to, to, to make it a, a bit polite, okay? Okay, okay. Thank uh, you. Uh, uh, excuse me, what about if I'm talking Again, your symptoms. Guys, if you want to make it good, try to avoid use your. But you can okay. say according to uh -huh. the past medical history, according uh -huh. to the past medical history, I believe this condition is this one. You can say according mm -hmm. to your past medical history, it's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but you cannot say your diabetes, your hypertension. You cannot say that. Yeah, yeah. I know it's clear for me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so move on, uh, Nihal. Now, Nihal, you will be the doctor. Uh, Sabrine, are you there? Sabrine, are you there? Okay, no, Sabrine. Okay, uh, Ihab, are you there? Yes, I am here. Okay, so Ihab, you are the patient, and then we'll do swabbing. Nihal, you are the doctor. Two okay. minutes of preparation. Start preparation now. Okay, if you are ready, you can start. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Nihal, and I am the doctor in charge here today. How can I help you? Yes, doctor. Nice to meet you. I have, uh, I noticed a better taste in my mouth, mm -hmm. and also a burning sensation in, my, in the back of my throat. I'm here to figure out what is the reason behind that. Okay, I'm really sorry to hear that. It must be stressful for you. Uh, but before mm -hmm. we proceed any further, could you please tell me more about that? Yeah, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, yeah, I, I noticed this uh, better taste and mm -hmm. this burning sensation uh, several days ago, and uh, it is getting worse while I'm walking in the morning. Mm -hmm. and also after, after breakfast and mm -hmm. this uh, see uh, this problem and also i, I am having a bit uh, of, of the, on the food i cannot swallow easily okay uh, so um, uh, have you noticed any difficulty in swallowing recently yeah yeah as i told you i am mm -hmm. facing this problem okay in my, in my swallowing Okay, thank you. So, could you tell me more about your lifestyle? Yes, sure. Like what? Sure. Uh, do you smoke? Yes, I smoke five to ten cigarettes a day. Okay. Uh, what about drinking alcohol? Yeah, I drink uh, two glasses of wine with dinner. Okay. Thank you for sharing this information with me. And uh, have you noticed any change in your weight recently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you, yes, I'm, okay. I'm getting overweight. Okay. Thank you for sharing this information with me. So now, uh, I believe this condition is called gastroesophageal reflux disease. Have you ever heard about that? No. Okay, uh, let me explain it for you. It is a condition which could be caused by uh, number one, alcohol use, number two, being overweight, number three, smoking, and number four, which is very important, bad butcher. How does that sound for you? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, it sounds there. Yeah, I heard about, I remember now, I heard about this reflex. You, okay. This is a serious condition. You mean a very cancerous condition? Okay, I really is appreciate your worries. I really appreciate mm -hmm. your worries. Uh, this condition, it could lead to many symptoms, uh, which could be as a bitter taste and a burning sensation at the back of the throat. And it is uh, not necessary to lead to any precancerous condition. How do you feel about that? Uh, I feel okay now, but uh, how come this condition be treated? Okay, thank you for asking this question. It's a really, really good question. So now let's talk about dietary and lifestyle measures which can be helpful in controlling it, which include first plan, weight management, uh, second plan, uh, mm -hmm. following little and often diet and not mm -hmm. eating three hours before going to bed. Number three, lifestyle modification like smoking cessation and alcohol cessation number four elevation of head at bed and number five which is very important avoidance exercise straight after meal do you think you can do that yes i can do that but uh, you know i see i i am feeling victoria a little depressed because you are not taking my mm -hmm. uh, my condition seriously enough mm -hmm. and uh, i want to be seen by specialist Please. Okay, okay. I really appreciate your worries. And let me reassure you, at this stage, there is no need to be seen by a specialist. And uh, let me mention a medication that could be helpful in this condition. It's called ranitidine. It could relieve the symptoms. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm following you. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. but uh, what is the, how does uh, this drug work? Okay, uh, it is uh, a medication. It could be helpful in gastroesophageal reflux disease, and it could decrease the uh, acid. Uh, its mechanism it could dec decrease the acid, which could lead to the symptoms of this condition in the stomach. Do you feel comfortable about that? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. I okay. Feel, okay. Anyhow, okay. So now uh, let me tell you. I believe we can start first with lifestyle modification. Uh, then we could consider any treatment plan later uh, if uh, there is limited response to ranitidine. Do you feel comfortable yeah. about that? Yeah, yeah. I heard something about uh, this camera scan. I need uh, this endoscopy. Okay, thank you for bringing this for discussion. So uh, we could start with lifestyle modification first and we could consider... Uh, okay, uh, thank you. Nihal, okay. time is over. Uh, thank you, have for your help. <clears throat> okay. uh, greeting and introduction. Very good listening sounds. Very good. Again, okay, more than uh, five times. Sympathy, very good. But before signposting, very good. The open question was amazing. Uh, okay, so uh, have you not said any difficulty? So here, what we can uh, understand that you are not listening good to, properly to the patient because he mentioned that he has a difficulty in swallowing, uh, but still you ask the question. So sometimes when you when you ask the patient uh, the golden question, could you please tell me more about that? He may he may give you some answers. So no need to ask again. Sometimes you you find more than uh, one question. When you say, okay, let me, can you tell me more about that? He may give you the answers. So that's enough, done. Go with the next one. No need to ask again. Because if you ask it again, the same question, and sometimes the patient will tell you, I told you. So this is a big uh, fault in your listening sound, in your listening performance in general. Uh, if the patient say okay. like, uh, uh, I have, a, he said, I have a difficulty. And although uh, you asked him the same question again. Okay, you, sorry, uh, I didn't hear it actually. So yeah, I'll ask it, yeah. Yeah, no worries, but this is good because this will uh, make you next time uh, listen carefully to the patient's talk. You asked about four or five questions. The idea of questions is to cover your, uh, to give you background for what you are uh, explaining uh, and to give you the mark for uh, the questioning and that's it. Don't, um, guys, don't put yourself in a real doctor position. So you don't need to ask uh, uh, too, uh, too many questions about something. Just one or two questions just to hit the, uh, the box of open question or the information gathering and that's it. Could you tell me about your 
lifestyle do you smoke uh, do you how, how what about drinking alcohol uh, have you noticed any weight uh, in, increase in weight recently so you asked a lot of questions here uh, I اه انا اسف على المقاطعه والله انا خفت يقول لي انت عرفت ازاي ان انا بسموك مثلا او درينك yes. الكحول فقلت لازم okay. اسال الاول عليها ده بس هو كان كل المشكله بس اوكي جود جود بوينت يا ذس از جود بوينت هاو كان اي افويد ذس بيكوز يو ار نوت تيلينج هيم يو شود ستوب سموكينج نو نيد تو دو ذات بيكوز ان يو ان ذا ادفايس يو ويل سي نمبر 1 سموكينج سيسيشن ذاتس ات سو اف هي از سموكر He will stop smoking. Uh, but uh, if you said like number one, you should stop smoking. Maybe he will tell you, how do you know that I'm smoking? I don't smoke, doctor. Oh, uh, number two, you should decrease uh, alcohol. Yeah. Do- doctor, <laughs> I'm not an alcoholic. Who told you that I drink alcohol? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but if you say uh, smoking cessation, quit the alcohol drinking. Though, so it's not uh, for you. So this is a uh, general advice for everyone who uh, goes with the uh, the same problems uh, so now uh, so again the same problem now same boasting very good uh, i believe this condition is called this one have you not ever not uh, heard about that good one okay again let me explain very good you have uh, you had the live labeling and highlighting two times very good uh, how does that sound good how do you feel about that good Okay, thank you for asking this question for me. Now let me explain the lifestyle measures. This one is categorization. Very good. Labeling and highlighting again. Very good. Do you think you can do that? Very good. I oh, appreciate your concern. Very good. <clears throat> let me uh, mention uh, a medication called ranitidine. Very good. Are you following me? Very good. Let me explain it. Very good. Do you feel comfortable about that? Very good. Now, again, I am boasting. Very good. <clears throat> Uh, we can start with this and then we can do that. So then here's the embossing. Do you feel comfortable about that? Uh, very good. Actually, this is a 10 out of 10. Good performance, uh, uh, Nihal. It's just Thank you, Dr. Nidal. Wallahi, bjad, yani, aktar min nas illi fadidni fil speaking hadratak. Ana aslan ma khattish dars. Yani, ana kunt bas basma muhadrat hadratak khususan al-life. Shukran giddan, wallahi, fa'ala. Okay, you are so welcome, Nihal. Very good performance, 10 out of 10. Uh, thank you for this uh, compliment. Um, unfortunately, it's uh, recorded. I cannot take it. Okay, if you are ready, you can start. Hello, my name is Dr. Ehab. Uh, I am one of the doctors in charge today. Uh, how can I help you? Hi, doctor. Uh, recently, I have been experiencing a bitter taste in my mouth and uh, a burning sensation in the back of my throat, and it is uh, concerning me a lot. Uh, I'm so I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, please, can you tell me more about that? Yes, sure, doctor. Uh, I have noticed it is worse during uh, the morning a walk after breakfast, and sometimes there is a bit of regurgitation of food as well. And um, I uh, I am here today to seek the medical advice. Uh -huh, okay. Sorry for that. And uh, uh, to make sure that I understand you correctly. Uh, you said you, you have a better taste and uh, a burning sensation in your throat and you have a uh, difficulty in swallowing food trigger and all uh, and, and this in the morning mostly am i right yes doctor yes uh, so thank you for sharing this information with me uh, before we proceed uh, i would like uh, to i would like to ask you a few questions if you don't yes, mind sure. Yes, and, yes uh, and then we will talk about the possible diagnosis and okay. finally we will talk about the management plan how does that sound to you yes sure doctor thank you okay do you have any cough uh, yeah it is a slight cough when i speak uh -huh. okay. Okay. Uh, sorry for that and uh, uh, from the data i collected from you uh, most likely the diagnosis is something called gastroesophageal reflex disease. Have you ever heard about that? Uh, yes, doctor, I've heard about it before and I think it is serious and precancerous condition. Am I right? Uh, uh, I, your worries are reasonable. Uh, 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 let me explain for you more. Can I go with that? Hello? Yes, sure. Yes, sure, doctor. Yes, uh, it is. Uh, it is not a. Very, uh, it is not a, car a, car a carcinogenic uh, disease. Uh, actually, uh, it is 
it is uh, uh, the acid will come in the, the food pipe. It go up from the tummy to the food pipe and will cause okay. this uh, symptom for you. And this, it can be caused uh, number one from alcohol use, number two from being overweight, number three is uh, smoking, and number four is bad posture. Uh, uh, am I clear so far? Yes, doctor, you are clear. And how it uh, this could be treated? Uh, uh -huh. Okay, nice question. And uh, uh, excellent to be raised in the conversation. Uh, I would like to, to, to talk about the li lifestyle measure. Uh, and that can help you in controlling it. Can I go okay. with that? Yes, sure, doctor. Yeah. Yeah, number one, you need to, uh, we, number one, you need to wait uh, management. Uh, number two, uh, uh, to, to food avoid meals, mm -hmm. like little and often eating. Okay. Number three, la, uh, lifestyle modification uh, okay. uh, and uh, smoking cessation, stop alcohol. Number five, number six, elevated elevation of the bed. A number seven, which is most important, is avoidance of exercise strain after meals. Would you be able to do that? Okay, doctor, but I don't feel it will help a lot, I think. Uh, and uh, you are not taking my uh, uh, symptoms seriously enough, I think. And I want to be seen by a specialist, if you don't mind. I do appreciate your concern and it is genuine. Uh, uh, for the time being, let me explain for you, for the time being, the specialist uh, we can, uh, is not uh, needed uh, for the time being. We will try this lifestyle modification. And I also I will provide you with uh, management of tablets called Rantidine. Uh, and then also, uh, the, and finally, I will give you the, a, a review to me, another appointment. Do you think you can do that? Okay, doctor, I'll try to uh, follow your advice and I, uh, I'll i see if it will be helpful. Okay, time is up, uh, okay, time's you. out, uh, Nihal. Thank you, uh, Nihal, for your help. Uh, greeting and introduction, very good. Uh, no listening sounds, again. Sympathy, good. No sign posting. Uh, please, can you tell me more about that open question? Very good. Here we can start with the uh uh aha. Uh -huh. So again, inform aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so aha uh aha. -huh. Mm, uh -huh. uh, sorry uh, for that. To make sure, so this is clarifying information. I just want to make sure that I understood you completely. You said you have this and this and this and this. Am I right? Check understanding. Very good. Thank you for sharing this information with me. Before we proceed why the time is up here guys because you spent a lot of time so you made two mistakes here let's go with the marathon again so if this is uh, the end point in marathon let's say like uh, 10 kilo meters you need to run okay you have are you there yeah i'm listening to you what you have done here you started with your full power okay but you couldn't make it while uh, another uh, another clever uh, uh, competitive with you com someone went like this you started with your full power okay i uh, just want to make sure that you under i understand you completely you said that you have this and this and this and this and this and this and this am i right oh this is very good uh okay before we proceed i would like to talk about this and then we will talk about this and finally we'll talk about this it's a bit like you don't know the, exactly the problem so how you made all these uh, plan uh, in advance you spent I a lot from the i i do I did the planning for the task, and uh, this I believe it is like sign posting. Am I right? No, no. You sh okay. you can you can plan it in your mind, but you, you, um, it 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 has to be uh you know it like uh, it has to be normal. You can make it in your mind, but you you don't tell us uh, this because it will it 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 sounds like fake. 
Uh -huh, How did you obviously. know all these things? You should start from the beginning. After you cover all the tasks, you can say like, I just want to summarize that you are here today because you have a problem or because you want to discuss with me this. And then uh, we discussed this. And finally, I advised you like this because you told us all these things and just you want to co cover it or you can't you want to summarize it but from the beginning you cannot tell us all the story because we need to go with with you to through the story up to the end mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Uh, i believe this condition is called gastroesophageal flux disease uh, have you ever heard about that this one is good aha uh -huh. okay your worries are reasonable reasonable again a lot of explanation let me explain aha uh -huh. aha uh -huh. mm ah uh ah -huh. So again, this is a bit uh, informal. Um, uh, it's not a cancerous. So this is direct question, direct answer. It is, uh, uh, mm, uh, again, you are making up things here, uh, causing uh, the symptoms for you. So you mentioned you again. Labeling, there is a hesitation here. From the second task, you started has been hesitant uh, a bit more uh, along with the card. And then up to the task number three, uh, the hesitation has increased a lot. Uh, 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 am I clear so far? So you've been hesitant even for check understanding. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Nice question and excellent to be raised. Again, a lot of uh, compliment is not good. Just, okay, this is important question. Oh, this is a good question. Oh, this is excellent question. But don't like say all things together. I would like to talk about lifestyle modification. This is categorization. Very good. Number one, you need to. Oh, this is order again. Oh, you, uh -huh. Okay, okay. I, you need to. <laughs> I say it like this. Ah, 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 ah. So again, you are using this a lot. Uh, you use it highlighting. Very good. Uh, would you be able to do that? Very good. At some point, you and the patient are talking together, and this is interruption. So if you are talking and the patient interrupted you, you should stop talking. But if the patient talk, you cannot interrupt her. Okay, okay. Uh, for the time being, I will provide you. Uh, uh, um, so again, and then, and finally, uh, signposting. But again, you mix it up things together. I think a uh, very good performance, but but uh, you need to be more serious. What I can see here uh, that you have a problem with uh, the uh, with the informal uh, words, and you have something called stepping. What is a stepping? A stepping that you need to uh, when you finish with something, like for example, the first thing you said. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. And then you paused, and then you said, "Please, can you can you tell me more about that?" So I'm really sorry to hear about that. And then paused, "Please, can you tell me more about that?" Oh, I'm really sorry to hear about that. But before we proceed, can you tell me more about that? So you should fill the gap in between. Oh, thank you for sharing this information with me. Now let me tell you. Oh, I really appreciate your concern. Let me assure you. Mm -hmm. So you need to be fluent. So this is fluency. How you can do that? By two th important things. Number one, using the signposting. Number two, which is more important, by uh, practicing. What I can mm -hmm. see here that, Ihab, you are not practicing enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, guys, uh, sometimes when you are hearing or listening to your friends doing uh, cards, you feel like, oh, this is easy. I can do that. And then again, you listen to another performance. Oh, okay, this is easy. Again, I can do that. But it's not that easy that you think. You need to practice and you need to put yourself in the situation under the stress of supervision and someone is assessing you. It would be more helpful if you go like in public with uh, randomly people. Don't stick with one friend because at some point you will be the same and you will not be able to notice your uh, faults. You need to change your partner. You need to go in public. You need to perform with someone you don't know him and you need to practice more and more and more. This card uh, is very good. Try to do it again with your friends. Try to take this information and go to perform in front of other people and see how they will 
uh, comment. This will give you more confidence. They will say, oh, this is very good. This will give you the confidence that you needed in the exam. Because one of the most important things that will raise your score in the exam, the confidence. And the, th the opposite thing is the hesitation. So if you are hesitant, you will decrease your marks and chances of uh, uh, score, uh, high score will be low. If you are confident, you will pass very easy. Okay? Okay, thank you very much. Dr. Okay, Dr. so, okay, Ahab. Very much. Yeah, yeah, no worries, guys. So this is the end of the session today. It will be uploaded on YouTube. Please, guys, go there, watch it again, and uh, make some notes. Write the important information. Try to do the card again. If you have time, please subscribe there and um, give me some comments there. If you have any like difficult card, just post it there on here, and we can do it together. Okay, thank you.